So what's another signal that's suggesting a very cold and wintry December that not too many people are talking about? The Siberian snow cover anomalies. Before I read this, why does the Siberian snow cover change our winter over here in North America? Let me break it down for you simply. Snow reflects sunlight, which radiates heat away from the surface, allowing the surface to cool much faster. This creates a large shallow dome of cold and dense air over Eurasia and Siberia. And as that landmass cools, it allows for a large Siberian high to form overhead. This Siberian Siberian high creates blocking in the mid latitudes, which forces air around it, increasing atmospheric wave activity. These waves typically travel from the bottom of the troposphere up to the stratosphere. And if there's lots of early season snow, these waves are amplified. As you know, to have a strong polar vortex, we like very fast winds around its core. Well, when you have consistent amplified atmospheric waves crashing into these winds, they're gonna slow. These upward atmospheric waves can actually push on the stratospheric polar vortex from below. This all leads to more sudden stratospheric warming events. And of course, that leads to Arctic air dipping down into the mid-latitudes where we are in the US. This is an article that was posted on weather.com on October 2nd, 2025. And I'm just gonna read you a portion of it. What does the Siberian snowpack look like today? Snow cover across Siberia has been quickly increasing throughout September, according to Rutgers University. Today, much of the Russian interior between the Ural Mountains in the West West and Pacific coast in the east has an above average snowpack. The few exceptions are along Russia's Arctic coastline in the north. Looking ahead at the forecast, Russia will likely see a continued increase in snowpack along its southern borders with Mongolia and China with an active storm track. 